Welcome to the Evolvepreneur podcast channel, which is sponsored by Evolvepreneur.biz, a new online community-based platform designed to help develop your skills and knowledge to be massively successful in this new digital age. Your host today is John North, who is a three-time number one international best-selling author and strategic marketer. John's passion is to help business owners to master the online marketing world. Welcome to Evolvepreneur podcast channel. Today's special guest is Jim Edwards. He's the co-founder of Funnel Scripts along with Russell Bronson. Jim was one of the first people ever to publish an ebook on the internet way back in 1997, which is almost 20 years ago now. Since then, he's gone on to teach around the world on four continents on everything from webinars, self-publishing, video production, sales copy, email marketing, membership sites, and other e-commerce top topics. Jim is the most famous for his online software wizards and scripts, which make many repetitive and difficult tasks such as writing emails, sales letters, or video scripts, push button simple. Jim is also known for his landmark programs, including the Net Reporter membership and mini site creator course and others. Welcome, Jim. I'm really excited to have you on the podcast today. Oh, thanks for having me. It's, I'm excited. Love so, to so. love to do stuff, but the 1997 thing doesn't sound that, that impressive. But when I tell people, you know, back before the turn of the century, then they're like, oh, okay, <laughs> now we're talking. Yeah, well, my son was born in 1999, so there you go. So there you <laughs> he was go. born at the turn of the century. So yeah, it's kind of it's weird, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Think about it. But 1997, that's like it's almost 19 it's years ago. 20 years ago, yeah. This is this ago. is 2017. That was 20 years ago. Wow. So <laughs> so you published the first ever ebook. Where did you publish it? Online or? Yeah, I put it up on my i. In order to publish it on the web, I had to learn how to set up a website and learn about hosting and FTP and optimizing graphics and search engine optimization and all these other things just so I could sell the book because I'd been turned down by like 40 publishers. I tried to get a real publishing deal and I was actually, it's funny, I was at a, a homecoming at college. And I ran into a fraternity brother, and he and his dad own, own or still, I don't know if they still own, but at the time, his dad, who had owned an advertising agency for many years, he'd gone to work for his dad, and they were getting into this thing called New Media. Right. And so they had bought a web server, and I'd heard a little bit about the internet, and I said, hey, do you? I got this book I wrote. Do you think I could set up a website and sell it? And he was half drunk and said, yeah. Yeah, I bet you could. So I taught myself how to program in HTML, taught myself all these different things, and then got the book up and started selling it. Wow. And back in, like, the Internet wasn't really big. I mean, I, I don't even think Google anything was around then. So basically, you know, to get found on the Internet was pretty tough back then. It, the, the main search engine back then was a site called Alta Vista. I don't know if oh, you remember right. it. Only vaguely. We never really got much in Australia. We really started with Yahoo and those sort of ones, really. Yeah, well, this was pre-Yahoo, and so we we literally were starting from nothing, but we figured out how to show up number one on Alta Vista, and we were getting traffic and stuff. And I got it up to the point where that one ebook, $29 ebook, was making me enough to cover a house payment, two car payments, and the electric bill every month. Wow. So, yeah, took a, took took a while. But I got what was the ebook out. about? <laughs> um, it was actually and still is about how to sell your house yourself without an oh, agent. Gotcha. So yeah. I had in my previous life had been a mortgage broker and a realtor. So I, uh, you know, I knew how to show people how to sell their house without an agent, which really pissed off a lot of agents. I ended up getting featured on the front cover of the Sunday edition real estate section of the New York Times for my oh. book. And I was getting all kinds of nasty, hateful emails from real estate agents from across the country. It was it was kind of funny and pathetic at the same time. Um, yeah. But but I, I was the old good advertising or bad advertising doesn't really matter, does it? The right. Theory. Yeah. I was <laughs> one of the most talking. hated men in real estate. <laughs> so yeah, so your real estate agents weren't your market anyway, so you didn't really care, right? Correct. Yeah. Wow. So how did you get into the internet game in the first place? Like, was that just the first Ferrari into it? Like, did you? Um, that, were you a real estate agent, obviously trying to move from one thing to another? I guess the same old story, someone moves from one kind of profession on the internet. Well, it actually happened by accident because I was actually using the book to get clients. So I had the book on how to sell your house yourself, and I would go around to for sale by owners in the local market, and I'd give them a copy of my book and say, hey, here's my book. If it helped you, 
Only thing I ask is maybe you'd write me a note that I could use as a testimonial. And if, um, if I can do anything to help you, give me a call. So what happened was a few people used the book and sold the house themselves. The majority of them just gave up because the majority of them will. And a yes. lot of those people called me and I ended up listing their houses. My first year in real estate, I took um, 52 listings in one year, which anybody will tell you your first year as a realtor is impossible. Yes. Um, but then what happened was I started making money on the Internet and then I came out with another product, came out with a mortgage product called um, the 10 Dairy Little Secrets of Mortgage Financing. And then I came out with a typing tutorial because all of a sudden people needed to know how to type. And then people started asking me, hey, how are, how are you selling this? And, and so I teamed up with a guy named Joe Vitale. We wrote a book on, we wrote an ebook on how to write and publish your own ebook in as little as seven days, showing people how to you know, publish on the internet. And then uh, I wrote a, created a, a product with Yannick Silver called 33 Days to Online Profits. And then it just kind of went from there. But it was never on purpose. It was because I was doing it. And then people were asking me, hey, how are you doing this? And I, you know, out of the goodness of my heart, I decided to teach them and charge them. Mm. <laughs> so that's what I did. It's going to work from there. I mean, it's funny, funny isn't it? When It's got the reverse effect when people think that you're trying, like the real estate agents, if they had half a brain, what they would have done is ring you and say, look, can you rebrand uh, this for me um, so I can sell it? And, you know, and, and you know, people it, want help, it, you know. It's funny, you, you say that, and I actually did that for several people with my mortgage product. I would, when things, you know, I wasn't making a lot, a lot of money, I man, I was paying my bills and, and doing okay, but I would rebrand my mortgage product for mortgage brokers. Mm -hmm. And they could, it was like private label resale rights, and I would charge them a thousand bucks and, and let them do that. Had a number mm -hmm. of people do that, so. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's about the attitude, I think that's the thing, that people, um you know, people think there's a world's short of stuff, you know, like you're taking clients away from them. So they've got to, they got to do, you know, they've got to complain to you because that's the reason why they're not making any sales. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so how did you get into copywriting? Like, it obviously looks like, you know, obviously in some cases, and I think this is a very important thing that's, and I want to talk about in the podcast was that copywriting is the, to me, is the most important thing you can do when, when you do your offer. But most people don't, don't do very well in that. Well, it was 2001. It was the summer of 2001. I made a conscious decision that I wanted to learn how to write sales copy. I wanted to learn how to put words on paper and words on a screen that persuaded people to spend money because you're absolutely right. I realized that that was the number one skill I could develop. It wasn't how to be a better author. It wasn't how to drive more traffic. It wasn't how to burn stuff to CD or put up websites or FTP things, though I would need to know how to do those things. Mm -hmm. I needed to know how to craft offers to get people to spend money with me because there's no money in second place when yes. on on the internet when it comes to online business. Mm -hmm. So you have to know how to do it. And people say, well, I can hire somebody. Well, I can tell you without a doubt, I am the best copywriter in the world that I ever hired. <laughs> because I have generated numerous products that have each sold six figures and above. I refuse to pay somebody else to write sales copy for me because the best copywriters in the world, you can't hire them. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's going to charge you $10,000 to write a, a sales letter, in my opinion, I'm going to piss some people off by saying this. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's going to charge you $10,000 isn't worth the $10,000. Sorry, because if they were, they'd be writing copy for their own stuff and making 10 or 100 times that amount of money. True. So yeah. someone who's going to charge you five grand, 10 grand, 20 grand plus percentage for a sales letter, if they can't show you where they're using their own copywriting skills to generate the kind of money that you want to generate in your business, you are better off writing the sales message yourself. You can outsource everything else. You can outsource the sales. I mean, you can outsource the, the, um, not the sales copy, but the graphics. You can outsource yeah. the formatting. You can even outsource the product creation. Mm -hmm. But in my opinion, you can't outsource the sales copy 
because nobody's going to write it as well as you can write it. Now, there will be some people who say, well, you know, you can, it's good enough and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. But I, anybody I've known who's ever hired somebody to write a sales letter for them, they ended up rewriting it anyway. Yeah. It's, it's like they're giving you the first draft. And I know there are exceptions to every rule. But the other thing was back in 2001, I couldn't afford to pay somebody $10,000 to write me a sales letter. Yes, yeah, And now so. I can afford to pay somebody $10,000. And there's no way in hell that I would because mm -hmm. I've got tools and strategies and other stuff that – it would take me longer to explain to them what I needed, who I was targeting, what the benefits and everything were than it just would take me to just do it. The briefing process, yeah, which right. is the hard part. People, um, you know, and we'll get to the to the funnel script stuff in, the, in terms of just answering questions, but I think it's quite a, quite amazing. I think at the end of the day, if you're not passionate enough about what you're selling and you can't write a passionate letter about it, then you probably shouldn't be selling it. Well, or on the flip side, if you want your business to be, hey, look, I'm just going to see where I think there's a need and let me let me risk some money on a product and risk some money on some sales copy and see if I can make it happen. Mm -hmm. If you want to be more like the speculator, then that's a different business model. That's not what I do. I'm not saying that's not a legitimate thing to do, but that's not how I've done it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so at the end of the day, you know, and I think, um, you know, copy – even small tweaks in copy, which people don't really understand, is that can make a massive difference. You know, just one word or sure. you know, the placement can make a massive difference on the thing, and that's that kind of split testing process that most people won't do either. Or just one one headline. I've seen a change in a headline make a five hundred percent increase in sales instantly before, and I've seen even more dramatic effects. But I had one sales letter one time. I'd, I'd created a, a product. It was called. Um, five steps to getting anything you want and it was really it was a five-step process that i had developed or uncovered or distilled down and how i was able to go from dead broke and living in a trailer park to paid off house in 18 months and i i created a program about it and i wrote a sales letter and i i started driving traffic to it and no sales no sales no sales i was like what the hell and mm -hmm. then i um i changed the headline and we started, we, sales went up 500% instantly. I mean, it wasn't wow. no sales, but it was like, you know, one here, one here, one here. And then all of a sudden, you know. So what'd you change we, it to? Um, I don't remember what the original headline was, but the one I changed oh, it to was, was, was basically the, the one I changed it to that actually did well was mm -hmm. how to gain an unfair, how to instantly gain an unfair advantage in business and in life. Right. Yeah. Who'd want, not want that? Right. And I think the original headline was something like, you know, how I went from dead broke, trailer trash um, to, you know, wildly successful or something. It was all about me. And I was just mm, it was not dis it was not good. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, and the thing is, I modeled that other headline from another website. It was that I'd seen, you know, how to, it was it was basically how to get an unfair advantage um, in the search engines. And so I did how to get an unfair advantage in, in business and in life, how to instantly get an unfair advantage in business and in life. And who, not, who doesn't want that? You know, at the end of the day, that's what they, you know, someone wants an advantage and it's unfair, who cares, right? Right. <laughs> so with copywriting, like, is there two or three things you'd say to someone that, you know, do in that process? Because, I mean, all that copywriting is is a process. It's just a, a case of following some rules, right? Yeah, well, the number one thing is that copywriting – is not some magical thing that you're born knowing how to do. And it's extremely formulaic mm. from the standpoint of there are things that work and there are things that don't work. You know, there, there are certain formulas that are proven to work, you know, like, like how to get big benefit without pain. You know, yeah. that's that's a headline formula that works for a lot of different reasons. You know, it, it hits a wide range of people. It, it hits analyticals. It hits, you know, that that one. Who, who cares why it works? We just know that it works. It's so like your first buttons work on websites, right? Right. Well, sometimes it do. You have to test that. That could be bullshit. Um, yeah. you know, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I mean, it's like somebody said one time that, you know, red headlines don't work. They have to be blue. And I was like, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> Sometimes um, I don't think about as much either. Yeah, you don't you don't know until you test. But mm. there are certain things that we just know work. You know, like bullet formulas of of features so you can benefit. 
know, yeah. whatever the feature is, it's, it's got a purple button so you can see it at night. And then, you know, feature benefit meaning is the most powerful formula. So green buttons so you can see them at night and won't go off the road into a ditch, leaving your children to fend for themselves for the next 10 years as waifs and orphans on the street. Yeah, um, that's a big picture you've just drawn there, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, other things I've learned, uh, you know, verbs, uh, lots of verbs. You want to be very active in the way that you communicate because anytime you can use a verb, it causes people to create a mental picture. And if you can involve emotion. So, again, these are things that you learn. Learn by doing. Learn through study. And my big thing has always been just looking for those patterns. I've, and, and this could be an inborn thing. Mm -hmm. the, the creation of sales copy definitely is a skill that I believe anybody can learn. If you will focus on your audience, focus on their needs, focus on their problems, focus on their pain. If you will study good copy, if you will read and learn about copy. But ever since I was a little kid, I've always been fascinated with how things work and patterns. I don't know why, I just have. My mom gave me a radio, a little transistor radio when I was five years old, which back in the early 70s was, that was a big deal, having a handheld transistor radio. Mm. And I took the thing apart the same day they gave it to me. I mean, I, <laughs> I literally took it apart. I was pulling the thing apart. I was looking at all the parts and and i ruined it and my dad was mad and my mom said hey it's his he can do what he wants with it and i used to just take everything apart to see how it worked and then i got really fascinated in school with algebra and, and believe it or not algebra and english because right. yeah. i noticed that algebra had very very i mean it's all about formulas that's all algebra is it's it's putting stuff together and mm -hmm. then english I think I was the only person in English class in the history of the world who thought that diagramming sentences was incredibly cool and fun. <laughs> um, and so I've always been, you know, interested in language and, and parts and, and things like that. And so I think that innately led me to want to create funnel scripts. Uh, and in funnel scripts is not really the first thing I've ever done with blueprints and, and patterns and things like that. But it's the culmination of about 20 years of, of software development and, and sales copy and actual sales experience and actually having done it yes. um, is how it all came to be. But that's... I don't, did that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, I think it did. Well, okay. yeah, and I mean, at the end of the day, it was really just sort of seeing how your mind works in some respects in terms of that product. Because I think you're right, like, it's a formula, and, and actually getting on the funnel scripts is, is interesting because, you know, I use it all the time. I mean, I'll share one, one last mm -hmm. thing with you just real quick that, to mm -hmm. demonstrate this. When I got to college, I majored in, in fraternity and beer and chasing girls. That was my thing. Do you get a certificate for that? Or and that? Well, and in order to keep my habit um i ended up majoring in history and i knew i needed to you know get b's so that my parents would let me keep going to school so i figured out a formula to get a b on any history test any blue book exam you know essay exam in history right. yeah. all you had to do was dis whatever the question was yep. you discussed the social economic and religious impact that it had on the world at that time and you just that's all you got to do mm -hmm. and you can get a b and if you would bother to learn any dates or names of people you could get an a but i never bothered <laughs> to do that and so um that worked for me all through college never failed so that's when i realized hey there are formulas out there and there are for, there were formulas in real estate there were formulas in the, in the mortgage business just everything can be reduced to a formula if you just look and and figure out what what needs to get done so that i'll stop talking about <laughs> my past but that makes sense i mean and i think I, I read i was looking some stuff on the internet just recently talking about math and basically they reckon mathematics is the foundation of everything oh yeah um and, and I think that's where it comes to from. There's a, there's a, there's a foundation process to anything. And actually, I, I did a book with a client called um, 
about fitness and he was a um, school teacher and he said answer the about the, told my son answer answer the question so in the exams answer the question or in our, as Australians say answer the bloody question and and so that was what what a lot of people don't do it's like what you're doing there is you're actually answering the question right expanding on the on the answer rather than just saying you know what's the temperature today and you tell how much the temperature is no what's it look like and I think that's that's really where where you know copywriting is too. You're answering the question, aren't you? You're, you're saying to someone, well, this is what I'm giving you. I'm going to tell you what tell you more about it. Right. And you're infusing emotion. emotion. You're infusing mm. emotion and desire and and fear into it. Because mm. <clears throat> I always think that um, people either do one of two things: they do things for fear, um, you know, avoid pain or get pleasure. Sure. Um, or one of the two, <laughs> one the other way around sometimes. Yeah, or both. <laughs> or both at the same time. It's always a good thing, right? Um, so, so with funnel scripts, which is I'm a I'm a big user of funnel scripts. I go in there, you know, very almost every day to do something. And one of the things I noticed was that the questions uh, in, in themselves are really good questions. So, um, step us through how funnel scripts works and how that whole thing comes together, because um, that's that, that's very interesting in terms of that. It's almost a mathematical equation, but looks of it to me as well. Well, if you tell somebody, hey, go write an email, they're looking at a blank cursor. They they can't do it. Yes. And if you ask somebody a question, they can answer it, right? Yep. And if you ask them another question, they can answer it, right? Yes. Okay. So, I mean, I can I can play that game all day, can't I? <laughs> yeah, you can. Okay, yeah. so the the point is it's it's a game. It, the game is can I ask you the right questions to get the right bits out of your head? And then take my formulas for creating everything from ads to emails to complete webinars mm. and plug mm. them in to the formulas that I have distilled down and then give you a result. And the answer is yes. But instead of asking you what's a, what's a, I don't know what, I, I can't even think in terms of asking them of the wrong way. But if I ask you, hey, what's something your customers really want? And it completes this phrase, I really want to blank. Can you answer that question? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's another thing they really want to do? So I really want to, you know, get more traffic. I really want to build up my subscriber base. I really want to sell my house without an agent. I, I, I'm desperate to save the commission. So I can take those building blocks of save the commission, sell my house myself, get more traffic, find a motivated buyer, whatever it is. And then I can plug those building blocks into formulas that you don't even have to learn. All you have to do is just own, just know your market. So answering questions like, you know, what's what's a big problem that they're facing? You know, I don't know how to sell my house yourself. What makes that even worse? Well, if I can't sell my house myself, then I'm then I'm going to be stuck here. And, and what makes that even worse? Well, then my wife's going to leave me and my kids are going to be on the street as waifs and orphans and, you know, begging on the street corner in Sydney. Now, all of a sudden, I can put that into sales copy, you know, are you, are you worried? Are you, are you having a problem selling your house yourself? Are you scared that you're, you're not going to be able to pay the commission? Are you worried? And, and to make matters even worse, are you, are you real concerned that your wife's going to leave you and your kids are going to end up on the street? Well, luckily for you, there's a solution. And then you're mm -hmm. putting in all of your stuff about your product. So it, it really just, takes it it uses questions to elicit the information from you and then it automatically just plugs it into whatever it is you want to create if you need to create an email write an email sequence if you need to create a tweet you'll create hundreds of tweets if mm. you need to create a webinar to sell your product it'll create all the webinar materials even the slides literally will spit out a complete PowerPoint presentation along with all the marketing materials, opt-in scripts, all that, everything. Because I think it was quite amazing when I did one of those, like it just the amount of content it generates. Um, yeah. It's, it's hours and hours of work that you'd go through trying to framework. Correct. And so what, what it does is it short circuits the process of, hey, I need to end up with this end result. Instead of me learning everything 
there is to do this, all I need to do is come up with these little tidbits and then the other, then, then the, the funnel scripts takes care of everything. It's like my, my next door neighbor, good old country guy. And you'd look at him and you think, man, that's a bumpkin redneck, not a, Mm. you know, a highly successful home builder, which he is. Mm. But he and I were putting up a fence one day and I was like, Hey man, you know, do we need to do this? Or, you know, I need to, he said, Jim, we're not building a watch. We just want to know what time it is. <laughs> and I was like, holy crap, that's what Funnel Scripts is. You don't need to know how to build a watch in order to be able to tell somebody what time it is. True, yeah. And at the end of the day, it's, it's like anything. You know, like you know, if you're an expert on something, you don't necessarily um, have to reveal how it's done. Sure. No, and, and nobody really cares. Mm. I mean, so, that, that's yeah, the, the, the bottom line. Yeah, so everybody wants to know how it works, right? Well, no, I mean, a lot of times I don't want to know. I mean, it, it, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, most people believe that it's really hard to write a sales letter. So if you want to write a sales letter, you basically have three options. You, you have to figure it out yourself. So you struggle, you procrastinate, you suffer. There are weeks of effort. You end up, you know, with nothing done. Mm. Your second option is you go hire somebody. So you got to bite the bullet and actually find somebody. Then you got to know if you trust them or not. Then you got to hand over the money. Then it's a gamble to even work. And you still have to do a ton of work to give them the info and do the research and all that. Mm -hmm. Mm. Or you can use funnel scripts where you basically fill out a form and you get a good sales letter in in about 30 to 60 minutes. So, I mean, among other things. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the, the whole key of copywriting too that I've learned is that the hardest draft is the first draft. Yes. If you can get a first draft done, then you have something to edit, something to tweak, something to get feedback from people on. Mm. And so really what Funnel Scripts does is it helps you come up with the first draft based on proven principles really, really fast, like instantly. You click a button and it's done. Yes. Yeah, it's amazing. And, you know, within a few seconds, you've got back a stack of content. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to use it all. It's a case of that's a starting point. You can always just turn around and do, well, that didn't turn out too well. Do it again. Yeah. And and you're going to get better as you go along. Absolutely. I mean, I, I mean, I think I did a script and for a email, I think a couple of months ago, and it basically what it spat out was ninety percent what I used. In fact, I think I changed two or three words in the entire email. Sure. Um, and so, to me, like I was quite amazed when I first looked at it. I thought to myself, "Oh, I'm going to have to, you know, start working through this." And then start off reading it, going, "That's no, pretty good." Yeah, that's no, pretty good. <laughs> and that's <laughs> normally that what bit. people do. Like, damn, that's pretty good, actually. I can. Yeah, I could have done good. better than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, and I, I religiously watch uh, Funnel Fridays um, when it's on. It's, it's it's very very entertaining, and I know that. Um, yeah, you, you know, you and Russell do this this show every every usually every Friday. Although I know it's obviously over the Christmas and all that sort of stuff, it slows up. But um, and, and you basically try and build a funnel in half an hour. But it's kind of expanded into something much bigger than that. Yeah, it um, has kind of devolved, yeah. hasn't it? I mean, evolved. Sorry, evolved. Yes, very good, <laughs> very good. That's why you say. So, um, in terms of that show, like, um, is Russell um, like? In, it seems like you try and keep him on an even keel and, and um, you know, he sort of goes off in tangents and you try and keep the thing going. Is that basically what you see your role as? Or? Um, yeah, I mean, it, the show has kind of evolved. It, it, I don't know where the hell the mask stuff came from, but, oh, right. I mean, <laughs> I, I have got just tons and tons of masks because i got to have a, a different mask or a different hat or something every time. Um, which is fun because I can get mass and I play with the grandkids and, and stuff and yeah. scare the crap out of them and then they get them <laughs> when I'm done and I can write them all off as a tax deduction. <laughs> but the I, I think what it's turned into is, you know, Russell's the driver and I'm, you know, I remember if you remember the Johnny Carson show, but, mm-hmm. you know, he's Johnny and I'm Ed McMahon. Yeah. Um, I mean... And I don't have any problem being the the straight guy, the the the, the second guy. I, I have no problem with that. I mean, he's mm-hmm. he's younger, got tons of energy, and it's his show. You know, mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. I'm just you know I'm the guy that comes in and and I, it really works. It's uh, a great mix. It's a great mix. It's almost like um, you know, it melds really closely together, and it's sort of like. Um, 
even from the very first show, it, you could see that it was there was a form. You know, I guess it, again, again, a bit of a formula there going on, a recipe. But um, you know, it, it flowed really well. And I thought it's you know, it's funny where you you sort of like sometimes put up a sign that says you know we may offend someone or yeah, you know, that sort of stuff. So it's funny. And, and so yeah, but that is, I mean, that's us being our maybe a little bit magnified version of who we are in real life. But I mean, yep. I'm wearing a hat right now that says "Warning: I will more than likely offend you at some point." That's the hat that I wear around. Yeah. Um. You know, I. I I just, it's just, it just works. And I think when you work with people, if you find what your sweet spot is as far as your role and then just really own it 110% and mm -hmm. be committed to the show or to the product or to the business and don't wait for somebody else to come along. And, and sometimes I think I'm the leader and other times he's the leader. I mean, I'm, I'm the leader on funnel scripts 90% of the time, but the other 10%, he steps in and I let him take the reins and, and it just, it just works. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's important as well as kind of a, a business lesson. But if you have a partner, it's important to really clearly define who's doing what but i think that leadership should be shared not just on the back of one person because then that can lead to resentment hey i'm doing all the work hey i'm doing all this stuff and so and so doesn't you know I, i'm the reason that this is happening and and whereas with funnel scripts it, it really is a, a good solid partnership where everybody's doing what they're best at and I think you're not you're not letting your ego rule it. You know, like a lot of people, I think that's where it goes wrong. You know, your ego kicks in, and people want to to over um, sort of own it more. And I'll be honest with you, I don't I don't think I could have done it ten years ago. Mm -hmm. My ego mm -hmm. and where I was ten years ago. I mean, I had to be the man. I was Jim Edwards. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was doing the cruises all over the world and and speaking all over the world and doing it. There's no way. I mean, I if I'm not number one, then screw it. Mm -hmm. But you know, I guess at some point we all have to grow up. Yeah, exactly. You know, I wouldn't going to say mature, but, you know, <laughs> grow up. Regrettably, right? <laughs> right. So, but, but yeah, if you watch Funnel Fridays, A, it's a lot of fun. B, you'll learn some stuff. And, mm. and the other thing, the formula behind that one really is we're trying to show people that with the right tools and with really good focus, we can accomplish more in 30 minutes than some people will do in a whole month. Yes, exactly. And and so there's a there's a real desire there to to help people remove excuses and see, you know, damn, if I just sat down and did it, I I could have some real stuff done like today. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think that's the biggest the procrastination process that people go through and they put things off. Um I've got some coaching clients and and you look at it and go, you know, that those three emails you were supposed to write like 6 months ago, which could have put money in your bank account. Right. You still haven't done them. And, right. and you think to yourself, why didn't you do them? And it's what, oh, I've got all these excuses. I can't write emails. I, can, I found something else to do or all well, that sort of stuff. And you put it off. And reality was its most important um, thing you should have done. Yet all these other things you, you did instead weren't. And you said, what would you do instead? I don't remember. Yeah. yeah. You know? and, and can so I borrow can... 50 bucks? Yeah, can I borrow 50 bucks? Exactly right. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I think that uh, that shows also it gives you a lot of business lessons. I think it, it gives you some real um, insight into the way that you know, particularly you and Rus Russell's brains work in terms of that process. You know, what's okay? What do we do first? What do we do next? And I see that every time it's almost like a, a step by step sort of process. And I mean, just purely by following that, you know, people get a hell of a lot more done. Right, but without over planning either. It's mm -hmm. it's that's so one thing I will say about both of us is we're both action takers. Mm -hmm. It's the 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 time between when a decision is made and when action is taken is is small if if infinitesimally small most people will decide quote unquote to do something and then five weeks later they're still having taken the first action we'll decide yeah. to do something and start doing it right then it's kind of like fail fast right so the, at the end of the day if it's not going to work get it out of the way and do it and then if it doesn't work move on to something else Right. And, you know, the thing with Funnel Fridays, it was, hey, we're going to do this. We said, OK. So we set a date and we said, OK, Friday, we're going to do it. And we both mailed our lists and, and it was then we showed up and we're like, damn, we got to do this. <laughs> it's sort of pressure, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, anytime you can have a social social pressure and and social, I guess, social responsibility or just mm. being and and can look stupid. 
Um, yes. If you don't, then that will drive you as well. Hey, we got to stand and deliver. But then the more you do that, the more confidence you have in yourself that you can stand and deliver. It's like somebody said, you know, Russell said to me, hey, do you think you can take Star Story Solution and turn it into a script? Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, I can do that. Now, did mm -hmm. I know exactly how I was going to do it? No. And, and mm -hmm. you know, but I'm, I'll have it done. I have a certain deadline. It's got to be done by. It'll be done. And there you go. So that that's the other thing. You, the more you do it, it builds the muscle of confidence that you can do stuff that you couldn't do that you haven't done before. And that's one of the cool things about funnel scripts is that mm. once you trust using funnel scripts, you know, hey, you know what? I know that I'm going to be able to create the emails I need. I know I'm going to be able to create the headlines and the teasers and the um, the content and the webinars and the video sales letters and everything else. I know I'm going to be able to do that because I've done it and I'm getting better and better at using the tool. And getting better in the answering the questions is exactly. Right. And I, th and I think, yeah, I said, it's the old kind of burn the boats process. I say a lot of people like, if you're going to run a, if you're going to run a webinar, don't spend six months planning it, just set a date. And then somehow magically that seminar will be ready by that date. Yeah. And if you want to really do it, go find somebody that you have a lot of respect for and do the webinar with them as a partner. Mm. That way it overcomes you not having a list. And all of a sudden, the the risk of disappointing them will drive you to work 24 hours a day to make sure that it that it works. Yeah, basically tricking your brain into it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or scare your brain into yeah, it. Scare your cares? brain into one of the two, yeah. Because I think most people would rather, you know, like fear of failure or fear of, of disappointing someone. You know, that's very highly emotive. Um, yeah, they'll and, fail themselves yeah. often, but mm. they won't fail other people that they hold in high esteem nearly mm. as often. Exactly, yeah, and that, that that's holding somebody accountable at the end of the day, and, and also um, being an unreasonable friend because at the end of the day, you know, if you let them down, then they, it's going to look bad for you. Yeah, you're a jackass. So mm. there you go. So so where where's um, where do you see funnel scripts going? Like, is it something that that the technically is going to continue to evolve? Oh yeah, I mean, I'm I've got, you know, it's funny when we started, I was scared. Oh, I'm going to run out of ideas. Nope. I got I got a I got years worth of scripts to still make. You could that, just about write a book in there, couldn't you? Like you could almost write a script to write a book. Well, I got a script. I do have a script to write a book, actually. It's right. not part of funnel scripts, but I do have. Mm -hmm. I have a I have a, a, a piece of software that will write a book for you. Um, I, there was a couple of pieces of software that I, that I mentioned at the start that I, you know, I hadn't really heard of. So, um, are they still like I think I checked on your website? A couple of them still for sale um, in that scenario too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the the big thing is that it's just going to keep evolving. And as people, you know, we just did one for to create descriptions and bullets and calls to action for Amazon listings because so oh, many people yeah. are doing Amazon now, fulfilled by Amazon or fulfilled by Merchant. That it's it's a big part of people creating funnels. So we teamed up with a guy who knows, uh, you know, that's what he does. And I sucked out of his brain how to do it. And the we, formula. you know, the formulas <laughs> and stuff. Mm. And he, you know, he loved it. And the people, I mean, people were going nuts over it. So that's another thing is I'm teaming up with people who are really good at, at something and, and then helping them to discover the formula and turn it into a, turn it into a script in funnel script so that a they'll have it for themselves to use b it gives them exposure to the funnel scripts community and and c you know it's kind of a nefarious diabolical thing <laughs> they can then go to people and say hey with their affiliate link and say hey you know you need to this is what we do and there's this really cool piece of software that'll help you do it along with all these other things and you need to go join this mm -hmm. so that's yeah. that's kind of what's going on too which is pretty cool it's like an encyclopedia of copywriting. Sure. Yeah. Well, all right. Um, well, we're up to 40 minutes, so I suppose we should uh, pull up stumps, otherwise we'll end up... Okay. Um, yeah, but um, is there anything... Like, if someone wants to get in touch with you or have a look at your products, what's the best way to do that? Um, two sites that they can check out. You can go mm -hmm. check out the jimedwardsmethod.com, mm -hmm. and you can also check out funnelscripts.com. And yeah. those would be, and if you'd like to see the Friday show, um, you can check out funnelfridays.com. Those would be the ones to check. Great. And those shows are on replay as well. So you can go back and watch the old episodes. And if you yeah, miss the, the live uh, show, you can, you can watch it. Um, yeah, I think there's like 16 on. episodes up there on Funnel Fridays. 
Yeah, yeah, because I normally it's pretty late at night in Sydney when when you run it. So I always watch. I always have my Saturday um, religiously watch it on Saturday. <laughs> there you go. And the good yeah. thing is you can speed it up to like double speed, so you can watch it in half the time. And <laughs> it's fun to listen to us talking really, really fast. <laughs> I don't know. Russell speaks pretty fast as is. I don't know what the double. He does. Me. Yeah. yeah. So, well, but I appreciate you having me. It was a lot of that's fun. That's great. That's great to learn. Yeah. And um, I'll have you on again, maybe um, maybe when you have some more scripts up there and, and we'll talk about the next story. Sure, that'd be great. Thanks, Jim. You've just been listening to another great Evolvepreneur podcast interview. We hope you enjoyed it. Please visit evolvepreneur.biz today to find out more about our online community and how you can take part.